Hello and welcome back to Your Morning Prophet. I'm John. We begin as we always do with gratitude. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to share wisdom with people about the Holy Bible. And please look after our families during the COVID virus and our loved ones. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Today, we're gonna to focus on the four Gospels, four of the 27 books of the New Testament. Now, just like Judaism has its five holy books that are the Torah, Christianity has the first four books of the New Testament being their most holy books because they quote about the life and of the sayings of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And this is the core of all Christians' belief, which is the gospel. I know I'm stepping into a minefield here because the gospels have been written about, uh, proselytized, uh, taken out of context, kept in context, but we're dealing with the King James Version. So we're gonna deal with the four gospels of the King James Version Bible, um, which are Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. The first three, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, are called the Synoptic Gospels because literally they're summaries, they're uh, synopsises. They have a beginning point and an end point. And the Gospel of John is distinctly uh, different in that it begins back in Genesis, goes to the third person talking about the Gospel of John, and then goes right in to where Jesus is starting to have his travails as he's leading his ministry. So, which of the four Gospels do you like? Or have you picked one yet? Did you even know today that there were four Gospels of the Bible? Some people don't know this. And there are many other Gospels that were written that never made it into the Bible. And a long time from now, we'll talk about those but they're called apocryphal. And if you hear apocrypha, apocryphal, that means having some truth, but not uh, having a consensus that what it says is actually true. And uh, that's, another, that's another day and that's another debate. Now, of the four gospels, Luke and Matthew are the two that actually portray Jesus from even the time before he was born, the nativity. And Mark, which is a really breezy gospel, and it's a great gospel to begin with because Luke and Matthew draw heavily from the gospel of Mark. Um, Mark starts with uh, Jesus' baptism with John the Baptist when he's uh, around 30 years old. Now, John uh, seems to go a little all over the place. It limits uh, the number of miracles that it portrays. And John is a lot more of an amorphous book, tries to go into the mind of Jesus, but spends almost all of its time talking about that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and we should believe in him. All four Gospels are very important. So it comes down to which of the Gospels do you prefer? Because they almost all contradict each other at certain parts we can find 10 or 11 different events that all four of them agree upon, um, which is uh, the baptism from John, the feeding of the five or the 4,000, Peter's profession, anointing by Mary, triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the Last Supper, Gethsemane, the trials, the crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection. They agree on that, but on many other things, they're different. So is this a reason to discount the gospel? Actually, I think it's because it's a very good reason to believe the gospels. Talk to any police officer who's talked to eyewitnesses of an event that happened less than an hour before, and he'll get many differing accounts, sometimes wildly differing accounts. That's very human. So I think that that's, that really is a, is a great point in the favor that the Gospels themselves um, have accuracy to them. Now, when were the Gospels written? 
Some people think the Gospel Matthew was written by the uh, Apostle Matthew, but Mark was the first Gospel that was written. Mark first put his Gospel into writing, which was Greek for all four of them, 40 years after the death of Christ. Then along came Matthew and Luke, which, was, which were both an average around 90 years uh, AD. And the Gospel of John came right in at the beginning of the first century AD, 100 years. So they're different Gospels. They're written differently. And authorship is also something in question. The, it's agreed upon by most Bible scholars that they weren't actually written by the people uh, they're attributed to because of the length of time it took for them to come about. But Matthew was probably the strongest candidate for the gospel written by Matthew, the tax collector who was an apostle of Jesus Christ. Written in Greek, which a tax collector would know, and it's a very forthcoming, very um, uh, in line with what happens next, much like a tax collector would know. So we'll give Matthew the possible, the apocryphal ruling. But then you have um, Mark, which actually came out before Matthew. And Mark was written by... Um, a young um, man named John Mark. He was the uh, a disciple of Peter as he traveled through Rome. And his version is, is uh, given to be writing down the stories that Peter told him. And Luke was a traveling companion of the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul never did uh, meet Jesus and we'll talk about that later on. So Luke is twice removed. Does this nullify the Bibles? I don't think so. I think most stories or oral traditions in those days took a long time to finally coagulate. People agreed upon them. They were written down. The Gospels are the story and the words of Jesus Christ, the most important figure in Christianity. And he had many names, Yeshua in Hebrew, which actually in English means Joshua, but they uh, it was changed a bit to mean creator also, and it became Yeshua and Jesus as we know it in English language. But here are some of the names that I think are interesting. There's 72 different names in the Bible for Jesus, um, all the way from the apostle of our profession, arm of the Lord, desire of the nations, the glory of the Lord, um, Lamb of God, which comes from John 1:29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. That's a great way to be baptized. Um, Another one of my favorites is the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, 6 prophesied, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's a great one. And one of my favorites, which has a literary uh, Translation also is the Rose of Sharon, which is from the Song of Songs from Solomon, is I am the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valleys. And uh, in the movie, uh, The Grapes of Wrath, the young child who's born and uh, doesn't survive, they name her Rose of Sharon. And I think that's just a, a, a lovely name. But any way you call it, he was the Messiah. He was Jesus Christ and the Gospels are about him. So tomorrow, we're gonna to dive into these Gospels and start talking about what they're about and why. Now it's time for intercessions. And today we have an intercession for joy. 
Now we changed the names to protect privacy and Joy, you know who you are because I answered you in the email. Joy has problems with her kidneys and her liver and causing her life uh, trouble. So today we come together, Lord, and I try to find the warmth inside me. And we ask that you take away the pain and the suffering of joy by healing her. Please, Lord, help her heal. Help her have a long life without the pain and suffering. And we ask this through your name. Amen. And you can ask for intercessions on our webpage, which is johntheprofitchurch.com. Well, thank you for being here for another day. We'll see you tomorrow.